or oops, now I'm recording. Welcome everybody, if you're real time or you're looking at this in the future, uh, which will be the present for you, which is, think about that for a second. Uh, we just wanna welcome everybody. We're looking at um, science. Admittedly, I'm not a science teacher. Um, I am certified in social studies. That's why last week we were a little more enthusiastic about longitude, latitude. I still have that up on my board in my office. Um, not that anything is wrong with science, it's just not my forte. So a lot of times when we're looking at science specifically, um, it's a lot of relearning for me, which is not a bad thing. Uh, I wanna be life, what they call lifelong learners. Um, but we looked at um, parts of a cell, which we will continue to look at, as well as we looked at um, how cells divide, all right? And I sent you a bunch of not only the textbook, but also I sent you um, some ones like a full chapter of this unit that I found for free online. Again, if teachers make up things, they're doing a lot more work than they need to. I find stuff and we work through that stuff. We're gonna work smarter, not harder, okay? Um, so I'm utilize, I utilize anything anybody else has made, whether it's a PowerPoint or a chapter somebody copied online, but we're gonna look into that chapter. Uh, might be something you wanna look at digitally and or, or if you have the opportunity to print, um, print that opportunity as well. So let's go real quick, see if I can find, I want to, open up real quick this YouTube first. I wanted to show one of the little videos on cells real quick. So let me find that. All right, so can you see what I'm seeing or no? Now, looking back through the years, we have a few. No, yes. So, okay. section, no. the time we took right. apart an so, owl pellet, the osmosis eggs, all of the fruit flies and genetic experiments. All right, let me pause that. All right, let me share real quick. First off, you all will get or have received um, uh, this section we'll look at in a, in a second. We looked at, uh, I think it's just the first two little unit um, chapters of unit one in the science book. Um, you guys got this is a plant versus an animal cell, okay? And the different parts to that. <clears throat> so that's nice little worksheet for you to look at. This is that big gigantic chapter three. Okay, um, this is the same one that I just showed you. Chapter three, cellular structure and function sheets. I think this is like, um, uh, it's a couple of pages, okay? It's, it's quite extensive. So um, we can look at some of that in a little bit after we look at, uh, and it gets really, really intricate in some, into some of this stuff. So. Um, if you have a printer at home, you can use it. If not, definitely it's digital there for you that you can modify and, and manipulate any way you want, okay? Um, so that's chapter three from somewhere, <laughs> but uh, everything will help here. So uh, lesson three, one was introduction to cells, then cell structures, cell uh, transport, and what they call homeostasis. I'm going to do a new share of, there we go. So let's look into this. We're gonna take 10 minutes real quick. I'll stop it periodically, but we'll look into this. I know it's kind of goofy, but whatever. We'll live with it. If you had to think back the day you ever had in the science classroom, which day would that be? Now, looking back through the years, we have a few. The time we participated in an earthworm dissection, the time we took apart an owl pellet, the osmosis eggs. Don't all remember of that. Uh-oh. Oh, I could go on. 
but I will never forget one day in my ninth grade science class. My teacher brought in pond water and I put one drop of pond water on a microscope slide and saw the most amazing thing ever. I saw an amoeba, a single celled amoeba on that microscope slide and I was forever stuck on science from that point on because I could not believe that this little cell was there alive on this slide, still eating because that's what amoebas do a lot. But to imagine that every person is actually made of billions of cells, of course, not amoeba cells, but animal cells, billions of animal cells, that's fascinating. In fact, it really makes you reflect on some of the incredible statements of the modern cell theory. The modern cell theory includes the following. First, that the cell is the smallest living unit in all organs. So that's huge. That's what we talked about a lot. It's the smallest living unit in all organisms. And second, that all living things are made of cells. Everything, whether plant, animal, whatever, even a one-celled organism is still made up of uh, cells. One or more cells. The amoeba I observed was a single-celled organism. What's uni mean? Unicycle, one wheel, unicellular, one cell. How do you like that? Unicellular. Humans are made of many cells, so multicellular. Multi meaning a lot or many. And third, all cells come from other pre-existing cells. You know, cells have their own little world inside them. They carry genetic information, they can divide, many have functions and processes that their organelles, structures inside them, can take care of. On our planet, we can divide cells into two major groups. As a cell, you're either a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Bacteria and RK are prokaryotes, but everything else, plants, animals, fungi, protists, are eukaryotes. Both? And that's in that chapter three, if you want to get super extensive about it. Prokaryotes, no uh, nucleus, and then uh, the, the nucleus is in the eukaryotes, eukaryotes. and eukaryotes have genetic material. Both have cytoplasm. Both have ribosomes, which are small organelles that make protein. Both have cell membranes, which control what goes in and out of the cell. But what makes them different is a big deal. Prokaryote, the pro rhymes with no, and they have no nucleus, which holds the genetic material and controls the cell's activities. Prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles are fancy organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria and Golgi apparatus. Eukaryotes, the U rhymes with do, they do have membrane-bound organelles. So now you may be wondering, well, what do the organelles do? What are their functions? Well, you know our style. We love our science with a side of comics. So we want to take you on a tour of the ride of your life into the inside of a cell. Now, to start our trip, we're going to have to get through this cell membrane, also called a plasma membrane. It's selectively permeable, which means that it'll only let certain select materials in and out. But by doing so, it keeps things in the cell stable, also known as keeping homeostasis. homeostasis. We have an entire video on just the membrane itself, which is found in all cells. But for now, we're just going to have to squeeze through this protein in the membrane. Now inside the cell, we find ourselves in this jelly-like material called cytoplasm. It surrounds all these internal cell structures and you'll find it inside both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now organelles that are floating around in the cytoplasm can have more support than you might think. Cells contain a cytoskeleton, which is a collection of fibers that can provide support for the cell and its organelles. And the cytoskeleton can even play a major role in cell movement. The cytoskeleton actually deserves its own video because it's very complex and its organization can vary depending on what kind of cell you're looking at. Moving through the cytoplasm, let's start with ribosomes. They are not membrane bound organelles and they're going to be in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. They make protein, which is really important because that's what so much of genetic material, DNA, codes for, protein. Ribosomes can be free in the cytoplasm but they can be attached to another organelle too, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We're now going to focus on organelles that will be membrane bound. So we're going to be focusing on organelles that you would find in a eukaryote cell. 
This takes our travel to the big boss, the nucleus. Now in eukaryotes, it holds the genetic material. Genetic material as in DNA, for example. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have DNA, but if you're a eukaryote, you have a nucleus to put it in. The nucleus controls the cell's activities, and inside it, it has a nucleolus, which is where ribosomes can be produced. Attached to the membrane of the nucleus, or nuclear membrane, you will find the endoplasmic reticulum, ER for short. It does a lot of processing of molecules for the cell, like protein folding, and it's highly involved in actually transporting those molecules around, like a highway. And there's a rough ER, which has ribosomes attached to it, making it, as you can imagine, rough. And then smooth ER, which doesn't have the ribosomes. Rough ER specifically tends to be involved with protein producing and transporting, because remember that ribosomes make protein. The molecules that leave the ER can be sent away in vesicles that actually pinch off the ER themselves. Now, smooth ER has many additional roles, including detoxification, which is one reason why your liver cells tend to have a lot of smooth ER. And another additional role of smooth ER is that it can make some types of lipids. Next, the Golgi apparatus. It's the ultimate packaging center. It can receive items from the transport vesicles that pinched off the ER. It has enzymes that can modify molecules it may receive and sorts the material it receives as well. It can determine where to send those molecules, including some that may eventually be sent to the membrane so they can be secreted, which means items that can be sent out of the cell. So with all that's going on in here, you might start to wonder, what's powering this thing? The mighty mitochondria or mitochondrion, if you're just talking about one. They're like power plants. The mitochondria make ATP energy in a process called cellular respiration. Now, it's not the type of power plant that you might think of. It runs on glucose, which is a sugar, and it needs the presence of oxygen to efficiently make ATP energy. Now, at this point, we need to mention that eukaryotes are not a one-size-fits-all. Animal cells can have differences from plant cells. We have a fork in the road here. For example, plant cells not only have mitochondria, but they can also have these awesome organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts actually make glucose by using light energy in a process known as photosynthesis. They tend to even have a green look to them because they have a pigment that captures the light energy and it reflects green light. Now, both plant and animal cells can have vacuoles. Now, vacuoles can have a lot of different functions, but many types act as storage of materials. Plant cells can have one large vacuole called a central vacuole, while animal cells can have smaller, several vacuoles. Now, remember how we already said that all cells have membranes? They do. But plant cells additionally can have a cell wall, which is a layer that offers additional protection and shape maintenance that animal cells do not. Hmm. Okay, now how do we get out of this animal cell that we've been in? Well, we could get out like a protein would. So if we were a protein, we would only be made because of instructions from DNA. And remember that in eukaryotes, DNA is found in the nucleus. It would be made by a ribosome because ribosomes make protein. The ribosomes could be attached to the rough ER, and the rough ER highway would provide a vesicle to send us to the Golgi apparatus where sorting can take place. And if we're tagged for being secreted, we could be sent off through a vesicle from the Golgi to the membrane. Out we go. Now just for a quick tour, there are still so many more awesome organelles found in lots of different types of eukaryote cells to continue exploring. So to the Google for more. That's it for the Beba sisters, and we remind to you to the Google. Your... All right, I'm going to stop sharing real quick. I'm going to turn that off, though, because it's going to be something else. All right, sweet. So where are we? Let me share this section. We can answer this first little part, OK? Uh, all organisms are made of more than one cell. Is that true or false? All organisms are made of more than one cell. False. False. That's false. false. Why? Because some cells are uni, uni. 
unicellular yeah like amoeba, <laughs> like uh like amoebas yeah unicellulars um organisms so they're but they're organisms by themselves and made up of only one cell okay uh early microscope created by well we don't know that one proteins are made of ribosomes i guess this gets this gets a little too i guess we had to read <laughs> chapter 3.1 so you can go into that if you want and then you've got that visual. I want to look at the next section of the textbook. You can see this, right? Uh, can you see it? Yep. All right, sweet. Let me scroll down because I copied the whole front end for you guys so you can see. We talked about different sections of, um, uh, of the GED, okay, and what percentage of skill sets they're made up of. Then we looked at uh, how science does not have short answers anymore. There are no short answers in the GED at all because they um, uh, don't want to hire enough people to read those short answers. And there's um, no social studies extended response, only RLA, um, which is good to know. So less writing. So everybody say, amen, yay, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, less writing, although... Uh, we will be having uh, some extensive look at um, the uh, uh, reasoning through language arts, the extended response. So we looked at the different sections. There will be multiple choice, drop down, fill in the blank, drag and drop, the hot spot, which you bring something to something else. Okay. We looked at the different sections. There'll be life science, physical science, and then earth and space science coming in at 40%, 40%, and 20 respectively. Um, Again, just buzzing through this. This is your, um, in math, you can use this calculator. This calculator is the literally the TI30XS uh, is the one you'll see. And you become very familiar with that um, in classes. Usually when we're in class physically, we have um, literally several hundred of them on campus where you can use them. You will get that during your actual GED and your practice GED if you would like to take that here on campus. Um, some study skills, which you, you should do four weeks, two weeks, and then day before and then and day of. And then we're looking at unit one, okay? That's nice, my connection to the internet is a little unstable. And we looked at interpreting illustrations, specifically we've looked at this and it's not the best version of a cell. That's why I printed the other ones for you. Okay, we looked at the different uh, sections of a cell. We answered some questions here. We got even more into the phases of cells. And we will watch a little thing on that. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telo or telophase. And then let's look, we're looking at ide identifying the main idea in details, specifically in organization of cells in a multicellular organism. So the main idea, as we looked at before, is the most important point, okay, in informational passages, an article, paragraph, or visual element. Other points that provide additional information about the main idea are supporting details. So you have your big main point and then you have other points that support that main idea, okay? Which could be things like facts, statistics, data, explanations, and descriptions. A main idea it may be easily identified or it may be implied. That's tough when it is. Sometimes it literally is in there and it's, it's specifically in there and sometimes it's implied. If the main idea is implied, you must uh, use supporting details to determine the main idea, okay? So let's practice this below. This is organization of cells in a multicellular organism, okay? Uh, an organism may be made up of millions, and we're talking for us, billions of cells of many different types. The cells in an organism are not all alike, nor do they have the same jobs. Cell, uh, cells are specialized to perform specific uh, functions and are organized to perform these functions. For example, bone cells serve uh, very different functions from skin cells. Uh, so let's look at this. What's it say? One, um, one sentence in a passage may state the main idea. Think about whether the rest of the passage gives more information about the idea in the sentence. If so, the sentence is most likely a main idea. 
supporting details. So these are the supporting details that talk about the different types of cells and their functions. So organized groups of cells work together to carry out a specific function by uh, forming tissues. Uh, in the human body, for example, muscle tissues attach to bones, con uh, bone contracts and relaxes to make the body move. <clears throat> tissues may combine to form organs. The heart is made up of muscle tissues working together to provide the power to pump blood throughout the body. Groups of organs working together to form larger systems with specific functions. <clears throat> the heart, blood vessels, and arteries work together to move blood throughout the body. The blood carries nutrients to and waste away from parts of the bodies. Um, parts of the body. Systems of an organism work together to perform life functions such as circulation, digestion, respiration, movement, and reproduction. Okay. Um, supporting details typically follow main idea. Uh, here the supporting deal details are examples of how cells are specialized and specifically specialized and organized to perform specific functions. So we're answering this question here, which sentence from the passage most clearly states the main idea? Okay, so we're gonna see probably three details and then one is gonna be a broader main idea. All right, an organism may be made up of millions of cells of many different types. The cells in an organism are not alike, nor do they have the same job. Cells specialize to perform specific function and, or, and are organized to perform these functions. Organized groups of cells work together to carry out specific functions by, performing, by forming tissues. So I'm gonna X this one out because that's way too specific. Okay, what about this one? An organism may be made up of millions of cells of many different types. No. No, that's almost too broad. Okay, the cell is an organism. Uh, the cells in an organism are not alike, nor do they have the same jobs. Is that what we looked at in these four paragraphs? Um, sort of, I but I don't think that we're looking at the most clearly states the main idea. So mm -hmm. I think C. Oops, mm -hmm. what did I do here? I think C is our best example here. Okay. Um, cells specialize to perform specific functions and are organized to perform these functions. Yeah, you have your different cells in your different areas on purpose, okay? So let's apply this skill and put it into function. Um, all right, so we're studying the information and illustration and reading the question, choosing the what type of answer, the best, best answer. answer. That's huge. It's not mm -hmm. always the right answer, it's the best right answer, okay? The human body is, is organized into systems such as the nervous system. That's the first one we're talking about. The nervous system includes <clears throat> the brain, spinal cord, and about 100 billion nerve cells, 100 billion with a B, uh, or neurons. Neurons carry um, signals through the body that allow a person to move, sense things, think, and to learn. The illustration shows a neuron, okay? So we have these different sections of a neuron, okay? Um, your cell body, your dendrites, uh, message in, your axion, and then the message out, okay? Which detail from the illustration supports the main idea that the neurons carry signals to allow a person to move, sen uh, sense things, think, and learn? So we're looking at that section specifically. Axions, axons, excuse me, uh, send messages out from neurons, or the cell body of the neuron, neuron is irregular in shape, or dendrites have many branches, or axons are thicker than dendrites. We're looking at what would help um, carry signals to allow a person to move, sense things, think, and learn, and to feel actually too. What helps that? So the message goes in through the dendrites, goes to the nucleus, has to pass through the axion, and must exit out again uh, the in delivering that message to the next one. So which, which section are you thinking is the most important for movement, helping, a, allowing a person to move, sense things, and think and learn? 
A? Yeah. Yes, very good. So we're gonna do that. So the cell body, it didn't identify if it's weird. I think all cells look weird to me. Mm -hmm. uh, dendrites have many branches. They do, but I don't know how that helps anything, helps us understand that, or axons are thicker than dendrites. That doesn't help me understand movement or anything like that. We need to know that there is messages being sent from one place to the other. All right, what do bones do? We're doing the same thing. Reading the passage and the question and choosing the what answer? The best, best answer. Yes. Very, very good. So bones operate with muscles to move um, the body. They also, also safeguard internal organs such as heart, lungs, heart and lungs. Bones are, bones store calcium and other minerals for the body to use. Additionally, the marrow, okay, the marrow inside the bones produces both red and blood cell, red and white blood cells. Um, which sentence would best fit the passage to state the main idea? Some bone cells release calcium. Bones can be compact and spongy. Bones are reshaped through a person's life or the skeletal system has numerous functions. D. Yes, D. All D. of these. All of these are very, very specific and they're detailed, okay? Now we're looking at this digestive system, okay? Super fun, studying the illustration, uh, reading his question and selecting what type of answer? Best. The best answer, yes, very good. We are looking at this really super fun esophagus. That's where the food enters, if you didn't know, okay? The esophagus after you swallow, then it enters the stomach. Stomach muscles contract and help mix food with digest digestive juices that contain, um, that continue to break down food. I can read. Small intestines partially digest food enters the small intestine, juices from the pancreas and small intestine and bile, uh, small intestine and bile from the liver, uh, complete digestion in the small intestine. The walls of the small intestine absorb digested food nutrients pass into the bloodstream yes fun stuff then your large intestine waste passes into the large intestine not much going on there okay uh which statement expresses the main idea of the illustration digest digestion begins even before a person swallows is that true it might be but they even talk about it here mm -hmm. i don't no. see it no that's getting marked off Digestion is most di digestion is mostly complete when the food leaves the small intestine. Is it true? I don't know. That's a question mark. Digestion is a complex process involving several organs. Is that true? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Or digestion take place takes place mostly in the stomach. Yes. I, I don't find that to be true because you have dige uh, partially digested food. So not only partially digests in there, we can assume. And your intestines are like, I don't know, 50 feet long or something ridiculous. Um, so what we're going to say here, it's between B and it's between C. Okay. So it's digestion is mostly complete when food leaves the small intestine or digestion is a complex process involving several organs. What is the best answer for the main idea c c i think c. oh c i think b is incomplete that's an error which detail explains the that secretions from organs aid with digestion in small intestines partially digested digested food moves from stomach to small intestine or pancreas juice intestinal juice and bile complete digestion the small intestine or the walls of the small intestine uh, absorbed and digest uh, absorb digested food or nutrients pass from the small intestine into the bloodstream. We are looking for the best answer for which detail uh, explains the secretion from organs aid with digestion, the small intestines. B. B. Very, very good. So we're talking about all these lovely juices pancreas juice, intestinal juice, bile, okay? They help uh, with uh, that. This is, um, I put that red, so we will look at that maybe next week, okay? 
So that's the textbook. You have a copy of that in your email and I'll send another copy tonight when I create another email. So I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Um, all right. So how many people looked at the IXL the other day? A lot of people, a lot of people mm -hmm. feeling it. Um, I haven't yet. Okay. I think I just got it today. All right, so yeah, if you just got it today, there's no rush on any of this. I want you always to go on your own pace. I'm gonna give you many, 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 many tools, okay, to be able to do that. So let's look, I wanna look real quick at the different, um, because we looked at this one, the different cell cycle phases. Those were those four phases. <clears throat> to put into perspective to human being is about All right, one- All right, we're gonna start it from the beginning. They're a little more than five feet tall. And so if we were to convert that into say meters, average person is a little less than about two meters tall. Now a person is the largest unit of life we consider. When we talk about the smallest unit of life, we're talking about a cell. Cells. That relatively looks like that. And while a human being is about two meters tall, a cell has a diameter of about 100 micrometers 100 mm -hmm. micrometers which to put into perspective relative to human being is about one one millionth the size one one millionth the size and yet there's so much that goes on here just as human beings grow and maybe we'll have babies cells do the exact same thing they grow and have babies as well or they undergo cell division so in the next couple of videos we're going to talk about how a cell grows and divides. Mm -hmm. So let's zoom in on the cell right here zoom and spend in. the next couple of videos talking about how a cell grows and divides. It's gonna be huge. The lifespan of a cell can be described by what's called the cell cycle. The cell cycle, which can be thought of as seasons in a year, just like we have seasons such as the spring or the summer where things grow versus fall and winter where they don't, the cell has times when it grows and divides and other times when it doesn't divide. And there are two main overarching seasons or types of seasons that we can talk about here. There's this period here that's more like the fall or the winter where you don't have as much cell division, but you have more growth of the cell. This period is what the cell spends most of its time in and it's called interphase. Interphase where we primarily have cell growth occur, but not cell division. Interphase is where cells spend most of the time. So most cells live here, but there is one key exception. What do you think that one exception might be? And I think I heard you correctly. If you said cancer, you're absolutely right. Cancer cells have some defect in them that cause them to want to divide more so than grow. And we'll talk more in detail about how that occurs in a minute. The other main phase of the cell cycle here is where you have active cell division and it's called mitosis. Mitosis, or sometimes it's abbreviated with just an M. Mitosis is the time where you have active cell division. Now there are a few other phases that occur within interphase. Yes. The first part of interphase is a growth phase and it's usually abbreviated G1. As you can see here, G1, is the longest phase of the cell cycle. So most of a cell's life is spent here. And it's in this phase that we produce extra organelles, such as ribosomes, so extra organelles, and proteins. So we make proteins that'll be useful when we get to the point for cell division. From here, the cell has a choice. If it wants to continue growing and move towards the direction of cell division, it'll move forward this way to the next phase that's called the S phase. And the S phase just stands for synthesis, more specifically DNA synthesis, because here we're going to have DNA replication. And that's where we take 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 23 pairs, we call them pairs because half of them are from your mom, half of them are from your dad, and we duplicate them. We replicate them and we end up with 46 pairs. And most cells go in this direction, as I mentioned over here. Some cells, however, instead of going forward from G1, they'll go in another direction here 
to a phase that's called G naught or G zero, where you have no more division, no more cell division, because there are certain cells in the body that don't like to divide or don't tend to divide. And you can think of a quick example like neurons in the brain. Once your brain is formed, it doesn't necessarily need to divide anymore. You just have cells grow. So that means it's sort of the end point for these types of cells. They won't usually come back and enter the cell cycle in this way. But let's continue as if it had. The next step or the next phase of the cell cycle is called G2, which is another growth phase where we are more directly preparing for mitosis. So we prepare for mitosis in a couple of ways. Perhaps a good example is we make microtubules. So I'll put micro, that symbol micro, tubules, which will be used to pull our chromatids apart when it comes time for anaphase. And we'll talk about what that means in a separate video. And finally, to be complete, we have our last phase right here, which is just mitosis, which is our final season of the cell cycle where our cell will divide. And once it's divided and turned into two cells, each of those cells will next enter the phase where they will grow and produce extra organelles and proteins that will eventually allow them to divide again. And so as you can see, just like seasons in the year, the cell cycle goes around and around. All right, so I'll send you the um, other sections of that interphase, anaphase. Uh, let's look real quick. So going to IXL. This is where when you play around, those of you who are new, when you play around with the different sections here, as you log in, you're gonna go to learning. Right, and then we have math, language, art, science, social studies, and then you don't really need to spend any time in Spanish. We want to do this in English. I think we looked last time at fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade. Um, but they have all different sections, okay, from just really water cycle, anything. It's craziness. We looked at cells, different section of cells, okay. Um, so we can look at really quick, hopefully get some time. Maybe we'll just start this and then you guys can do this on your own a little bit, but we're trying to get, um, okay. Select a part that contains the information. So we're looking at information that an animal, animal cell uses for growth and activities. Okay. So... Let's just go for it, mitochondria. Incorrect. Now we're gonna sit and learn real quick about it. So it is the, what was it? Chromosome. Memory. So chromosomes contain the information that uh, cells use for growth and activities. Nucleus directs the cells activities. Okay, that's the mainframe sort of deal. Vacuoles, those are nutrients such as sugar in the cell. Okay, mitochondria break down sugar. Cytoplasm is make up a thick liquid that fills space inside the cell membrane. The cytoplasm supports other cell parts and holds them in place. Many important chemical reactions happen in the cytoplasm. Cell membrane controls the substance that enter and basically the cell wall um, that leave the cell as well. Okay, so we missed that chromosomes. If you miss anything on IXL, there is always an explanation, kind of a little mini lesson on it. So which part um, whose main job is to store nu nutrients, water, waste in an animal cell? What is to store? I think it's vacuoles. Which one? Vacuoles, I think. This one, let's see if we got it. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, select a part uh, whose main job is to control which substance enters and leaves the cell. Which one? The cell membrane. The membrane. Bingo, bango. You guys are scientists, I think. Uh, select a part that contains the information that a cell uses, uh, an animal cell uses for growth and activities. We missed that last time. It was what? Chromosomes. Chromosomes. Uh, part whose main job is to break down sugars to release energy that an animal cell can use. Which one is going to break? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. 
Mitochondria. See, you guys are better at science than me. <laughs> Select a part that fills most of the space inside the animal cell. Cytoplasm. Bingo. Yep. And now we're to the main job is to store nutrients, water. We already did that. Which one was that? The vacuoles. The vacuoles. And now we're looking at uh, uh, direct an animal cells activities by sending instructions to different parts of the cell. That is the so. mainframe, right? The nucleus. The nucleus. I was just going to get it wrong too. All right. So you guys can check that out. That's only fifth grade O2. So that whole section O. So let me stop sharing really quick. You have any questions, comments for me? Um, I have a question. Yeah. So on um, the GED test, is it going to be, um, when we get these subjects, do we have to know this stuff as far as the cells? And what I, what I love about it is that you do not. Just like in the textbook where it gives you this information and it doesn't really teach you it, it just asks you to read about it and then answer questions. So mm -hmm. the science and social studies, um, those are reading tests. We want you to take them after you finish the reasoning through language arts. That's your best bet because if you could pass, if you can pass the reasoning through language arts, um, you will have a higher percentage of being able to pass science uh, and social studies because they're reading tests. You're going to get mm -hmm. articles about cells, articles about mm -hmm. um, animals or different, really it could be like, like I said, it's 40 um, different percentages of um, physical science, biology, uh, life science, and um, uh, space and earth science. So it's, we, just like in social studies, I'm not going to ask you to memorize all 50 state capitals. That would be super awesome if you knew them, like especially Florida. If you don't know Florida, we're going to, we'll just keep praying, okay? <laughs> um, but we don't have to or we don't need to specifically um, memorize those things. We need to be able to read about the 50 capitals and mm -hmm. understand information and perhaps, um, and perhaps be able to answer questions about that. But a lot of it is reading comprehension. Okay. So what I do when we are learning these different things, I'm trying to build your background knowledge. So it is a little bit easier for you when you go through some. So like if you, if you, not that you need to remember the parts of a cell, but you're now familiar with those parts, at least a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that if you see an article on, um, if you see an article on the GED or a section on the GED that has that, you'll be a little more familiar with the content as well as just do a, you'll just do a better job. But a lot of it is reading comprehension, but we don't, we don't need you to be scientists or social studies majors. It's not necessary, okay? Okay. Super great, awesome question because people freak out. They're like, I gotta relearn all of science. Oh my God, <laughs> you know, like I gotta read, I gotta do all American history again. No, it's good that you know it, but whatever. <laughs> All right, my friends, if you uh, can stick around, I'll be on here for the next six minutes, uh, unless everybody leaves, but I'll give you six minutes to go do what you need to do before you have to suffer through math. Yay. Yay, math. <laughs> Yay. All right, my friends, you guys have a good one, okay? Bye. We'll see you. See you Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. You too. Don't thank go you. Back. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Of course. <laughs> <I'm gonna cheer. laughs> I probably would. <laughs> see you, Marsh. <laughs>